supernatural powers. They're the masters of the Internet. They know how to use Facebook. They know how to use Twitter. They know how to use Snapchat and Instagram and all this stuff. Uh, they are a rather obvious rabble. They're a paper tiger. The only thing that keeps them going is comprehensive, seamless support from NATO through Turkey, that uh, airlift of jihadis out of Libya and into Turkey and therefore into Syria. All of that is necessary. They've got to be allowed to sell the stolen oil on the uh, international market. So all you need is actual attack. All you need is to start dealing with them. Um, and they begin to collapse. The bombing by now, I suppose, is essential because you want it to go fast. But the main thing is to close that Syria-Turkey border, the 65-mile gap, which is now it's coming in for a certain kind uh, of attention. So work with existing governments. Dump the myth of the Arab Spring. You look at this Nobel Prize that's just been granted to the quartet from Tunisia, the four representatives of civil society who allegedly uh, saved democracy in Tunisia. I don't really comment on, on Tunisia, a place that I've been to several times. But um, I think the reason that the oligarchs, right, the Eurogarchs, the old money Eurogarchs who dominate the Swedish Academy. Remember, the Swedish Academy is the intellectual branch of Ridar Huzet, Ridar Huzet, the equestrian order. In other words, the knights, the feudal aristocrats of Sweden working through Ridar Huzet have said, we want to keep the myth of the Arab Spring alive. Your choice in Syria is Assad or chaos. You had the same choice in Iraq. It was Saddam or chaos. You chose chaos. And in Libya, it was Gaddafi or chaos. And you chose chaos. And underlying the entire thing, a condominium of the United States and Russia, where in the Security Council, the U.S. can bring France and Britain kicking and screaming. And the French will scream louder because they feel that they're losing out. They, their policies have uh, left. And Russia brings along China. Notice, Kaczynski wants to ally with China against Russia. No, no, no. Better to do this with Russia. That's the true American policy. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Now you've got to keep up with everything on Topley.net, Topley.net. That's where you can find uh, my Twitter. You can find my books. Uh, later in the program, I'm going to talk about the Mormons. i got to talk about Jason Chaffetz in case he becomes Speaker of the House, which is not likely, but it's still it's too close for comfort. And the question of polygamy, Ron Paul wanted to deregulate marriage and bring in polygamy. That was his gesture to, to Mitt Romney. And uh, we have Chaffetz as um, somebody, I guarantee you, if you get Chaffetz in the, uh, in the speakership, you're going to have polygamy. And that's a very ugly thing. That's barbarism here in the United States. So uh, you can find books like that, Just Too Weird. Uh, Bishop Romney and the Mormon takeover of America with polygamy, theocracy, and subversion. So all of that is there. And you can also find our daily briefing, the Tax Wall Street Party morning briefing, to which I am a contributor. You can find that there, and you get your free subscription. Go to topley.net and click on the thing that says, give me a free sub, send me a free email sub in your inbox every morning. You don't have to go looking for it. We send it to you. So that's all there. Um, and you, very, very soon we'll have the, uh, the film of my appearance at the National Press Club on Monday evening. This was the Capitol Hill Civil War Roundtable. Um, very well attended, packed house. This was a version similar to the C-SPAN lecture that I had done on the anniversary, right? On September 24th, 1863, I had the honor of giving... Um, I think the, main, the only or maybe the main um, lecture on this, on the 150th precise anniversary of the event, uh, unfortunately because of technical considerations, then I couldn't have the slides, but this time we had an ample slideshow, and I think the people found that uh, highly, highly interesting. So let's look at now uh, this situation. The, the gist of what I was saying in the previous segment is that 
Putin has had the intelligence to see that ISIS is, is in effect low-hanging fruit. ISIS is a paper tiger. ISIS is the rabble. ISIS is not even the junior varsity. It's the intramural, the interclub teams, and so forth. So he can go in there, and with a relatively modest effort, he can get a tremendous result. Because the only thing holding up ISIS was Allen and Erdogan and their phony war policy. Pretend to bomb ISIS, but don't do it. One of the Russian spokespersons this week said the U.S. was bombing the sand. They were dropping the ordinance or not even dropping it. They were simply flying back. The Russians have been running 20, 25, 30 sorties per day with the planes that they have. Yesterday, for example, 22 Russian sorties, 27 targets hit. The Allen phony war, as I was constantly pointing out, was, was way down to five or at most 10 when we needed a thousand bomber raid. You could do that, concentrate a bunch of planes in the Middle East and then uh, do the job in a couple of weeks and away you go. That was what they did to uh, Iraq at the er early part of the 19. 90s. Uh, and the by the way, the uh, Caspian warships are continuing to contribute to this. So they've also got they've moved some rocket launchers to a an equestrian club, I guess a stable uh, near Hama. And that is now being used to clobber the uh, terrorists in the area. And of course, this entire argument that you've got to bomb ISIS directly is false, because what you've got to do, first of all, is stabilize Assad stabilize the Syrian army, because if that collapses, your situation then becomes dire. You've got to do everything possible, first of all, to make sure that Assad forces stay in the field, that they are stabilized, that they can even begin advancing, that you relieve the pressure on Damascus and the uh, Latakia area. In other words, Latakia to Banyas to, to uh, Tartus, of course, right, where the Russian uh, a modest base, but nevertheless an important base, uh, is is located. So all of that uh, is what they're doing. And this idea that you've got to go and bomb ISIS um, first is is wrong. Um, then there's this idea that he, Assad is trying to destroy, uh, the Russians are trying to destroy the wonderful moderate democratic terrorist opposition, and then there'll only be ISIS, and then everybody will have to clobber them, and then Assad will win. Well, uh, sure, because those forces are indistinguishable. There are no democratic, moderate terrorist rebels. There simply are none. It's a legend, as Russian spokespersons have also been pointing out uh, this week. So um, these are some of, the, some of the aspects. But now we got to get to this Ashton Carter. The big demand this week from this program, let the word go out from this time and place, fire Ashton Carter. He's a strange love. He's a madman. He's a pompous ass. He is a fool. He is a warmonger pedant. That's the Rand Corporation talking, okay? That's precisely Herman Kahn, world targets in Megadeths, and the guy is a prize fool. Get him out of there. For example, uh, he is essentially endorsing terrorism. There's no other way to put it. He is threatening Russia saying that uh, Russia, if you persist in supporting Assad, if you attack these uh, wonderful terrorist rebels that the CIA has provided, there will be consequences. This is the it's one of the uh, one of the front page uh, items, one of the uh, one of the top items here in the uh, in the Washington Post. Um, He's, he's also crazy in the sense that he says the, that Russia is isolated. Uh, Ashton Carter, this is the Brussels meeting of uh, NATO defense ministers yesterday, Thursday, October 8th. Ashton Carter says, Russia has continued to wrap itself in a shroud of isolation, and only the Kremlin can decide to change that. What does this mean? They've been invited by Syria and by Iraq, by your own puppet government is now breaking away and saying, we get a better deal with Russia. This is precisely why you want to have a bipolar world, so the third world can maneuver and get a better deal. It remains our hope, says Carter, that Russia will see that tethering itself to a sinking ship is a losing strategy. Well, this is simply uh, insane. And uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, 
anti-war, where you can find some of this stuff, um, that one of their headlines is uh, Carter, defense secretary, is essentially threatening Russia with terrorism. Can you believe it? U.S. Se U.S. defense secretary predicts terror attacks on Russia is the summary on this website. And I think that's accurate. And that is also the scuttlebutt in the corridors of Mont and Brussels. Um, he predicts that Russia will face reprisal terror attacks on Russian soil because of these military actions. The story, one story on this is from the London Guardian. Russia will pay price for Syrian airstrikes, says U.S. Defense Secretary. This is a threat to use CIA terrorist armies, CIA secret armies, ISIS and Al-Qaeda against Moscow. This is playing with fire. This man is a lunatic. He's got to be fired. He's a, he's a quackademic. He doesn't know what he's doing. He hasn't got a clue. Ashton Carter predicts reprisal attacks on Russian soil over Vladimir Putin's military campaign to prop up Assad's regime. <laughs> so that is a threat. Uh, we also have Stoltenberg. Uh, is also making threats. Um, and let's, let's also put it in context. Saudi Arabia has, in effect, declared jihad against Russia. There is a declaration out of holy war by a group of, what, 40 to 50 uh, benighted clerics, right, the ulima, that have said, we're, we're waging holy war against Moscow because what they're doing to us. The jihad has sounded, and NATO is piling on. Look at, look at those facts in front of you. Fire Ashton Carter. He's too close to the terrorists. We got rid of Alan. We got to get rid of this guy. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley in Washington, the 9th of October. Follow it all at tarpley.net. There's a daily briefing up there, and um, you should um, you should read it. Uh, it's a compendium. It's concise, and it's what's going on. So look, the U.S. Secretary of Defense coming at a time when the U.S. ally, at least from the regime point of view, Saudi Arabia, is making these threats. <laughs> he seems to be joining in. And the story we have there is you have these uh, religious scholars, right? Again, the ulima, the experts, and they've been issuing fatwas aplenty, calling for jihad. Now, I guess the Saudi government has not exactly formally declared war on Russia, but this is the effect. This is going to be uh, big. And again, you have to ask yourself, look at your children. You want them dying for the degenerates of the Saudi Arabian monarchy? Surely not. Um, you want to die because some guy like Carter, a, a warmonger pedant, a prize fool, has tied his career to this? So anyway, that's the uh, the article here in the uh, the London uh, Guardian. Uh, Russia, of course, uh, continues to point out that they are destroying the infrastructure of terrorism. Uh, and their national interest is quite simple. They don't want ISIS and Al Qaeda, for that matter, to survive and be able to come on to Russian territory. Uh, there's also a question now. Remember the issue we had in, uh, in July, August. Will the Patriot missiles <clears throat> that were moved into Turkey to defend uh, Erdogan against the Syrian Air Force, will they be removed? And the question then was, von der Leyen, the um, German defense minister, had said, we're going to take those out because you're not using them against uh, any kind of ISIS. You're using them against the Kurds. And the fact that you've got the Kurds um, weakened is actually helping ISIS. So why should we defend you when you're making our lives more difficult? Remember, the subtext of all of this is the refugee crisis in Europe and the tremendous pressure on the German government, the CDU, Christian Democratic Union, Christian Social Union, CSU, on Merkel at her, her party conference this past week. Stop the flow and put an end to the Syrian civil war. Now, let's uh, look at the uh, faction fight. There is a faction fight, and this comes to the fore, first of all, in an article 
uh, on it's, it's from Bloomberg. Uh, 